So the 1980s were um, a time when we were at the height of the Cold War. This was a period where the United States and the Soviet Union were very tense. Um, there was a concern every day that we would actually go to war. The U.S. Navy played a major role in this in that they had ability to actually strike the Soviet Union homeland uh, by traveling forward and conducting strikes off of aircraft carriers. And the Soviet Union was terrified of this. So they put a lot of money into investing in a capability to take out the aircraft carrier. They invested in a bomber fleet of very capable backfire bombers. And they, those bombers were equipped with an anti-ship missile, the AS-4. They built them in numbers. And they could fire them at the uh, 200 nautical mile radar horizon. So that meant that the goal of the air wing was to have all the fighters take out all of those backfire bombers before they reached 200 miles. A really tall order. And there was a lot of work on tactics development in that area um, for a long time. And so we worked together as a team at CNA. They're pretty much all the field analysts and certainly analysts even back in Washington were working together to analyze these tactics, to analyze the threat capabilities, to come up with ways to work together. I just joined CNA at the time, and so it was certainly a powerful time for me to be there. When I was the field rep at Miramar Naval Air Station, I was able to actually form a tactics committee, which was pretty fun, with a, a senior officer at Top Gun, the fighter weapons school, a senior officer at the F-14 training squadron, or the RAG, and a senior officer at the E-2C training squadron, or the E-2 RAG. And then we formed this tactics group, and we worked across all these Hey Rube exercises, and with some modeling that I did, to come up with a new tactic called chainsaw that changed just the way that the fighters operated. It was a very challenging tactic. We practiced it a lot, the community practiced it a lot. It required the fighters to actually go out to their maximum fuel range in a surveillance mode and then come back. And if they saw something, they would signal it back through a relay and get a launch of all the fighters that were on deck to respond to what they saw. So it was a way of pushing the coverage out, but it was hard. And so they had to try something. So they got very serious about, about chainsaw. And they worked on chainsaw pretty much until the Berlin Wall came down. And so that pretty much governed the, the tactics of the time. And when I first started working out at Miramar with the Hey Rube exercises, which were designed to understand the jamming and its effects on both the F-14 and the E-2C. And, and the effects were marked. I mean, they were very severe effects. And the community wasn't quite ready for that. And I very, very uh, clearly remember running debriefs with the F-14 and E-2 guys after a Hey Rube. So they'd run an event, we'd set them up against jamming, they'd come back. I had a little CNA team helping me and we'd all debrief the fighters because there was no automated data recording in those days. So you had to do the debriefs in person. And we would do those debriefs and um, the aviators were visibly shaken sometimes actually shaking as they said, you know, this happened. I, I, I expected to see this and I didn't see it. I, I, I couldn't figure this out. And they felt like they had failed. And we had to explain to them, no, this is, this is the way it is. This is what jamming is going to do to your system. And our whole goal here is to figure out how to deal with it and help you work through it. And CNA, the field reps, we communicated with each other, we worked together, we had sessions in Washington directly focused to the outer air battle and the backfire problem. And I think that we were vital partners to the Navy throughout this entire period in helping them develop tactics and, and get a sense that they could survive a backfire raid. Seeing the effect of jamming on an operator, having operators come by and say goodbye when you kind of know they feel like they may not come back and knowing that as a civilian I could help I could make a difference I could help them be sure to come back I could maybe even 
you know, help an aircraft carrier survive or later in my career help the nation not go to war at all. Just that notion that I learned in my earliest days here at CNA that we as civilians really can help. And, and I have always felt once I figured out that I could help, now I kind of had a responsibility to help.